Hello, my name is Chris Kiak. I'm the Vice President of ConnectCAD with ConnectTech. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate using the Connects Load Planner tool. The Connects Load Planner tool allows erectors as well as project managers to easily use the weight, piece mark, and location information of the objects in the Tecla Structures detailing model to easily plan truck loads. I'm going to begin by first changing my selection to Select Assemblies on the toolbar. I'm then going to window around all the assemblies in the model and what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign 3D addresses. ConnectStack uses a specialized code to um, basically describe the location um, on the project where each assembly is at. It's similar to the assembly position code that Tecla automatically calculates, but for uh, in-between beams here like in these bays, um, it assigns a unique 3D address for each one of these. So I'm going to go ahead and say assign 3D address. Tecla then prompts me at the lower left hand corner to select a grid. So I'll select the grid, and then you can see the process information counter there. So now all the 3D addresses have been assigned. All right, the next step is I'm going to begin adding a load here in the model. So when I add a load, I can then change the name here to say load number one. And currently there is zero quantity and zero weight associated to this load. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer here to the model. All right, the next step is that I can either select assemblies first in the model and then press this button, which is going to add the selected objects to this load, or I can choose this button and then I'm prompted to select the assemblies in the model in a particular order in which I want them added to the load. So here, let's go ahead and just add these four columns. Once the selection is complete, you just middle mouse button to complete the command. Now you'll see that the four numbered assemblies are then added the quantity is updated as well as the weight is updated on the load. We can just continue to add additional assemblies as required. So let's just go ahead and say add and then we'll pick in the vertical order which is typically how ConnectStech will erect the structure and middle mouse button when complete. And the yellow uh, colorization basically shows which assemblies have already been planned or loaded. All right, now we have a total of 12 assemblies and about 50,000 pounds worth of weight. If I come in here to the list, you'll see that the assembly numbers are a little bit uh, different here. We started one through four and then it restarted the numbers. In order to fix this, just to, so that way it's uh, one through 12, we just go ahead and say number load and it will then renumber all of the items in that list. Also notice that that grid or the 3D address information that we assigned at the beginning of the video is now showing up here inside of our loads list. Again, just to repeat the steps, I'm just going to go ahead and say add to load, and then I'm going to finalize by adding these assemblies here, then middle mouse button to complete the command. I'll then press the number load option here to make sure that all of the assemblies are correctly loaded or numbered, and then I'm just going to go ahead and say save button here, which will then save this information to file. When I'm here inside of the Tecla Structures Viewer License, you can't store information or user-defined attributes permanently to the model, so we store them in an external file called the connectsloads.clf file that's located in the model folder. I can access that file and email it to anybody by going to the File, Open Model Folder button, and then when I go here, you'll see that there's a connectsloads.clf file. Again, that is where all of the data is stored for the loads that you're creating here in the model. Now I pressed Control P on my keyboard while here in Tecla Structures and that put me into a plan view. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to window around these assemblies to do the next load. So let's go ahead and say add load and then we'll change this to load number two. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to window around all of these assemblies here in this particular bay. I'm going to hold down the Control key to deselect assemblies that I don't want to be added into this particular load. If the loads or the selected assemblies were already added into a previous load, they will not be added in this load that you're working on now, so you don't have to worry as much about overlapping uh, load selection. All right, so let's just go ahead here, and we're going to choose the different option, and this time we're going to say Add to Selected. So here this is going to read all of the particular assemblies that I've selected, and it's going to add them to the list. Now in this particular case, I may not want to load list my anchor rods and templates. So I can either sort by the name and filter those out, or I can just scroll down here until I get down to beams, 
and I'm just going to go ahead and select all of those and then delete them from the planned load. This will then clear that status from the list as well as from the model. I'm then going to go ahead and just say number these so that way it updates the numbering and then I'm going to go ahead and save. You'll now see that I have 35,000 pounds worth of weight on load number two. At any time you can control the visualization states of the loads that you've already planned. What I can do here is I can select the two loads and then I can say highlight and it'll highlight the objects that are associated to those loads. I can also come in here and say hide loads if I don't want to see those particular objects so that way they're out of my way while I'm planning and adding the rest of the objects in the model to uh, the next set of loads. What I can also do here is I can go ahead and say show loads. That'll then show the visualization state to the loads that are already planned. The last thing that's really interesting here though is that I can choose the show left to load option. What that does is it basically turns all of the assemblies in the model that are not associated to a load red as you can see here. Anything that's already loaded will be transparent yellow. If you want to clear these visualization states at any time, you can just right click and say redraw view. Alright, so let's go ahead and go over that one more time. Let's go down here and we're going to choose the show loads option. So that'll show the two loads that we've already planned. The next steps are we're going to go ahead and print this data out. So what we can do is we can select the two loads and then we're going to go ahead and say print. We can then choose the location where the report file will be saved. We'll then say save and then it will open up Microsoft Excel because it's a comma separated values or comma delimited file and we can then easily just grab these columns, fit the column width there and you can see then it's an organized report based on each of one of the loads, tells us the quantity and weight and gives us the itemized list ordered by the sequence number here, as you can see, for that particular load. This is everything that the erector pretty much needs in order to plan and execute unloading and staging out on the job site along with the erection drawings. This list can then also be sent to the shop to then plan fabrication, sequencing, and loading. I'm going to go ahead and save this load information and then I'm going to go ahead and close down the Connects Load Planner tool. I'm then going to go back into the detailing license. I'm going to do some design changes that may have happened. Then I'll come back here in the viewer license and we'll check for any updates on our loads. I'm now here back in the viewer license and I've received a new copy of the model from the steel detailer after he's done some detailing changes. The first thing I want to make sure I do is I go to the File, Open Model folder, and I want to make sure that I copy the ConnectsLoads.clf file from the previous copy of the model folder where I originally planned my loads, and copy that into the new model folder that I just received from the detailer. The next step is I want to launch the Connects Load Planner tool. I can either do that here from the toolbar icon, or if you don't see the toolbar icon, you can go to the Tools Macros menu, find Connects Load Planner, and press the Run button. That will then open up the tool. Now the first thing we want to do now that we have seen a new model here and there are design changes, is we're going to press the Update Loads button. This will then scan through the current model and any of the assemblies that were loaded and through our load list here and show us any changes. We can see here that items on load number one have changed. Let's take a look at a more detailed view. So we'll select the uh, 01 load here on the list and press the show load button. This will then show all of the assemblies and which particular assemblies have been modified or affected. The orange assemblies represent assemblies that have been modified, which we can then see here in the comment column. Also, there are two assemblies that were deleted out of the model and it, uh, the tool will automatically zero out the weight here so that way it reduces the weight in the load uh, list and then we can properly add additional assemblies that might be here nearby and move them to this lo uh, load to optimize the load. Now what we can also do is we can hold down the control key and select these modified items and then what we can do is we can go ahead and say let's highlight those in the model. So we'll press the highlight assemblies. So this shows us the assemblies that were modified. 
Now I can see that because we deleted the beams, the connections changed, the weight, and thus the piece marks may have changed here on these assemblies, but something has changed here on this particular assembly. So we're going to go ahead and select on that assembly here in the model, and then I can just choose this filter by selection. I then can see here that uh, potentially the, uh, the piece mark has changed or the weight here has changed, and so that may have reduced weight or added weight, and I just want to make sure I verify that here with my uh, load listing. Now one thing that's really nice here about the change management is it's not just good for piece mark changes or for weight changes, but it's also a nice clue into the project manager or a rector to come in here and review something that he already previously thought was okay and verified could be erected and didn't have any issues. Now that there have been design or detailing changes, he's clued in to come in here and not only see how it impacts his load lists, but see how it might uh, impact the erectability of the structure. All right, so once we're done here, we can just return back, and then we can do also filter here. So if you ever select on an assembly and you want to see which load it's on, you can easily do that as well. All right, now what you can choose to do is you can either print out the reports uh, again and have all of the modified and deleted tags on them, and that might be handy for the shop if they're already processing things in fabrication and they need to understand how to modify or change the loads. Now, once you've dealt with these changes, you can come up here and say clear modify states, and that will then remove all the modifications, as well as remove the deleted assemblies here from the list, which will then create like some gaps in the numbers. Now, depending on where the shop is already at in fabrication, you may not want to renumber these items, and you may just want to tell them that they're deleted, and then there will be a, a hole in the gaps. All right, so we're then just going to change the, or save that once we've made those changes and cleared the modification states. And we're pretty much done with, you know, doing the initial load listing as well as dealing with the revision. We're now here back in the detailing version of the model. And the first step is that I'm going to load the uh, erector or project manager's uh, load information back into the detailing model. So I'm going to launch the Connects Load Planner tool. And before I've done that, I've copied uh, the uh, connectsloads.clf file that the Erector or Project Manager emailed me. I copied that in here to my detailing copy of the model, so that way I can see the loads. Now, in order to write the status uh, basically to the assembly user-defined attributes, as well as the main part user-defined attributes, I simply just press this Write Data to Parts button. That will then quickly go through the model and write the attributes there to the assembly and the main part of the assembly. So then if I go here to the assembly properties, you'll see there's the load name as well as the erection sequence number. If I change my selection to objects and components, go to user defined attributes, the connects tech field page, you can see the erection sequence as well as the load number is there on the main part. Essentially, you just have to make sure that these two user defined attributes are defined in the objects IMP file of your current model folder or in your firm folder setup. There is a sample objects IMP file on the Connects Tech box download site. Once those user, at user attributes have been set, we're just going to go ahead and say save on the model. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the model folder. And again I can do that by going to the file, open model folder. And then I'm going to modify this IFC property sets.imp file here in Notepad. And what I've done is I've made sure that I've included the uh, load number user defined attribute here inside of the IFC export file. This is really handy so that way when I export the IFC, then bring it into Tecla BIM site, we'll be able to see the grouped uh, load numbers that we did here in Tecla structures, but see that over in Tecla BIM site for the erector. All right, so let's go up to the File menu, Export, IFC. I'm then going to export an IFC file here. I'll then just go ahead and select everything, or if you don't have anything selected, it will essentially create from all. All right, so now I've opened up that IFC file here within Tecla BIM site, and I'm going to begin by going up here to the Objects uh, button or tab, I'm then going to go in here to the properties and I'm going to scroll scroll down until I find the load number property. You'll then see here that the model is organized by the two different load numbers that I created in Tecla Structures. 
So now I can then see a detailed list of all those particular items and click on all the objects that are associated to that particular load here within the free version of Tecla BIMSight. Thanks for watching this demonstration of the Connects Load Planner tool. If you'd like to try out this tool, please email us at info at connectstech.com and just put in the subject line that you'd like to try out the Connects Load Planner tool. Thanks.